Come on, guys. Come on. These are about 11 month old sea lions, so born last year. And we've attached the satellite transmitters to try and follow them for the next several months and uh, sort out uh, where they're, they're going to feed, um, how well they do after this um, month or two months of rehabilitation. So they're, the sea lions essentially are going to tell us how well they're doing and what habitats they're finding food in and, and what habitats they aren't. Most people are familiar with SeaWorld's Rescue and Rehab Program, which not only provides injured, ill, entangled, and starving animals with a second chance at life in the wild, but also allows us to learn and gather data we can then apply to caring for all animals. SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment has pledged $10 million to fund research and conservation for killer whales in the wild, the largest private commitment of its kind. This commitment, along with groundbreaking research and innovative science happening behind the scenes at SeaWorld, directly benefits the protection and preservation of marine animals in the wild. I work on the wild killer whales in the Pacific Northwest, the endangered southern resident killer whales, which are a highly contaminated group of whales. And um, this contamination is a huge risk factor. So looking at the transfer of contaminants during the lactation process from the female to her calf, one of the key factors that we're missing is what is the offload from the mom to the calf during lactation. What percent of each of the contaminants that we look at are offloaded? And we can't get that through the wild whale. So we're looking at that here in the whales at SeaWorld so that we can actually quantify that percent offload and actually populate those models with better data. Species are struggling to survive now more than ever, including the southern resident group of killer whales, an endangered population. Every bit of information we obtain, even how they communicate, can be used to help scientists understand capabilities, conditions, and requirements of this wild population. Well, there's some populations of killer whales that are in trouble at this point. And what we've shown is that they do have the potential for some vocal plasticity, which means that it's possible that they could integrate socially with other groups. If you get to be too small a group, sometimes you can't make a go of it out in the wild, so that question is important and something that we can give to managers to help them figure out how best to ch channel management resources. Working with and developing trusting relationships with animals we care for has multiple advantages. One is assisting scientists who work in the field with wild populations. Animals in human care can help develop and test equipment and validate data, invaluable to gathering and evaluating information on wild animals. What we are doing is trialing a new backpack video camera uh, on emperor penguin. Now, since we have access to the bird, uh, we can attach the camera, see how the bird swims with it, and see what type of image uh, the camera obtains while it's mounted on the bird's back. Our eventual goal is to be able to deploy cameras like this on emperor penguins down in the Antarctic and we'll uh, obtain pictures to help us document uh, what type of prey they're catching, what type of swim maneuvers they're performing in order to catch those prey. That's the real goal of our research is to develop the techniques to be able to attach their quarter onto a whale uh, as well as refine and develop our, our microprocessors, the electronics, to accurately record the electrocardiogram so we can get a good signal on whales in the wild. The importance of, of being able to understand heart rate in the wild is several fold. Uh, number one, it's first good to know what the heart rate of, of an animal that large is, what the normal heart rate is. The direction that we're going in is to try to evaluate exposures in the wild, and these include exposure to sound and, and boat traffic. Again, by monitoring the electrocardiogram and the heart rate, of whales that are in normal activities versus those that are fleeing ship noise and such, we can then evaluate what uh, the physiological responses and the stress responses are of these whales that will help us to mitigate the problem. A cool new technology project records never before obtained images of killer whales from an unmanned aerial system. 
We were able to work with the NOAA scientists to essentially simulate uh, aerial photography with our whales. We positioned a camera over the pools so they could get a photograph that showed their entire body. Using the data that we collect from measurements, they were able to apply that and get a better understanding so they can look at photographs they take of wild populations and better estimate the weight of the animals and also their physical condition. And they're able to identify if animals' health is deteriorating so that they may be able to better understand the real things that are threatening those wild populations. We were able to provide information of a whale actually going through her pregnancy. Now, they can identify a pregnant female before the winter when research generally stops up there. They'll know which females were pregnant when they left the previous fall, and they'll be able to use that information to better understand the population dynamics. We need SeaWorld and other zoological parks now more than ever to make the connection, to create the passion, to teach and to provide expertise, which has not only helped thousands of animals in need, but helps to provide the solutions for wildlife conservation now and in the critical years to come.